Hello and welcome. This is NTA Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stover. Tonight we shall be looking into the nexus between the electoral law as amended and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As we project into the upcoming off-cycle elections in three states, Bielsa, Kogi and Imu, the two fundamental documents will form the basic guidelines on how to achieve a credible, transparent and acceptable pool. But before we go into the conversation, let's get to see this report put together by correspondent Mir Ugidi. Nigeria, a nation always on election mode, either general election, of cycle election or by election. And the umpire, INEC, always on the standby for the task ahead. However, what is static is the guideline set for each general election. For instance, prior to the 2019 general election, INEC came up with 52 regulations and guidelines, and before the 2023 general election, another set of 106 regulations and guidelines developed. And INEC is in part by the Constitution of the Federal Republic and Section 60, Sub 5, and 148 of the Electoral Act to do so. The most interesting aspect is that such guidelines prior to any general election take care of any other off-cycle or by-election. So, the guidelines for the 2023 general election are still applicable to the off-cycle elections in Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi states coming up November 11th, 2023. The guidelines for the 2023 general election are mostly unique because they are driven from the new Electoral Act of 2022. In the Act, Section 60 sub 5 empowers INEC to choose the mode of transmission of election result, and INEC included this in its guidelines. Clause 38 gives INEC that freedom. The Commission will deploy the bimodal voter accreditation system to authenticate the permanent voter's card and upload polling unit results to the INEC Resolve Viewing Portal seamlessly on election day. For the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the guidelines for the 2023 general election are cast in stone for the off-cycle elections in Bielsa, Imo and Kogi polls, and any other decision is null and void. The method is as provided by law, electronic accreditation, electronic upload of results on the IREF portal, and that is why we are doing this mock. So please disregard whatever was reported about what the rec was said to have said in Bielsa. Uh, that's going to be the procedure. And it's for that reason that I will advise you also for those who are registered on the RF portal. You should go to the RF portal. You'll see the result of the mock from all the three states. We are uploading uh, as we have done in previous elections. 5.1 million voters are to decide the next governors of Bielsa, Imo and Kogi states. And elections promise to be free and fair. Nothing as important like giving free and fair election to in a democracy. Uh, that we can assure you. This government is ready to provide that. Mr. President has given his orders and instructions. He said he will want to see free, fair, credible elections. And this is going to be the first election that he is going to be under his watch. He said that we should take this message to INEC and to Nigerians. The countdown to the Bielsa, Imo and Kogi elections has begun. And in a few days from now, the voters will speak loud. Mie Ogedi. Right, that report sets the tone for tonight's discussion. Let me introduce our guests. I'd like to welcome to this program, Engineer Yabagi Yusuf Sani, his chairman, Inter-Party Council, IPAC. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, Sini, for having me. Okay. We're also joined by Professor Andrew Haruna, Vice President, Nigerian Academy of Letters, Pro-Chancellor and Chairman of Council of Bingham University, and a former Vice-Chancellor of Federal University, Gashua. Thanks for being here, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. 
And also joining us tonight is Yunus Ustaz Usman, a senior advocate of Nigeria. He joins us via Zoom from Kaduna. Thanks for being with us tonight. Good evening. Thank you. All right. Well, as you do know, at some point, the program becomes interactive. But when we get there, we'll remind you of the process and the procedure. For now, let's begin to look at the issues at stake uh, about advancing democracy and uh, the electoral guidelines uh, as against the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, the 2023 elections have come, I mean, largely and, and have gone and all has been laid to rest, including some uh, very contentious issues that arose. Uh, but uh, at this point in time, let's just have a general assessment in the, of the uh, election so far in the country. Engineer Yaba as Chairman IPAC. Well, we can say so far so good in the sense that uh, <clears throat> democracy prevails and uh, we believe that uh, by what has happened so far, Nigerians are indeed very, very passionate about democracy. Uh, I listened to what uh, former president, um, former vice president, Atiku Abubakar said. Uh, they followed the process and followed the law to its logical conclusion. And although, of course, uh, sometimes it's not what you want that you get, but you learn to want what you have. And that's what he said, that this chapter has come to an end, but he's not going away. Mm. That to me, it's uh, something that is very, very fundamental because democracy is about people to come to form a government of the people for the people. And in spite of all that transpired, you know, he says that he's still there. He believes in the democracy itself. So I believe that we have come a long way. And the only drawbacks that we can see we are battling with, there are the three fundamentals that are, are given, I mean, must be there before you can have uh, a, a very uh, a striving democracy you must have strong institutions. You must have justice. You must have peace. If you don't have these three things together, uh, it will be difficult for democracy to progress. And if you look at it, these are the three things that we are battling with in this country. But thank God, in spite of the fact that we have problems, issues with the institutions, that are supposed to midwife, they are supposed to deliver you know, the promise of uh, 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 the loads that we are given. Uh, Nigerians, like I said, are very, very resolved, resolute that this democracy must survive and we must succumb all these challenges. We have not forgotten uh, what has been coming out of the judiciary. You know, when you talk about justice and peace, judiciary is at the cornerstone of how you ensure that peace reigns. But there's so much to be desired, really, from what, we have, you know, what is coming out of the judiciary. If you take it from uh, very recently, uh, what uh, the retired uh, Justice uh, Datijo his valedictory, valedictory uh, speech says a lot about where we are today, but all of them still have hope and believe that this democracy we have will work. All that it requires is for us to have that uh, 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 resolve and the courage to bring about the reforms that are required in those institutions. When you look at judiciary, you look at the, uh, the, the electoral empire itself, that is uh, INEC, and 
you now look at perhaps the political parties because we are the key players in the whole thing and uh, the three that I've mentioned all of us we have a lot that we must uh, do in order to ensure that we strengthen this democracy because Nigeria we, we, we are the, uh, the, the, the biggest country by all measures you know we, we play big in the scheme of things not not only on the continent of Africa but globally and democracy as the system of government which we have adopted which is the best form of government in, uh, ever, everywhere in the world you know we must make it work and to make it work we have to have the courage to ensure that those reforms uh, I listened to what uh, uh, INEC chairman was saying that what the law has provided that they must do they are still there and that is what they will do that is transmit the results from the polling units to the IRF so that Nigerians can now see the results of what is happening because if you if you listen carefully and you study critically the judgment the Supreme Court judgment on the presidential election what it says is that or it reaffirms the fact that elections are won or lost at the polling unit that's what matters that's the critical note in the in the value chain of election process and the INEC chairman has said that whatever transpires there they are they are for they are promising Nigerians that they are going to transmit it directly from there to the IRF so I believe that the INEC people that we always meet are fiercely committed to delivering on the mandate given to them but there are factors that are there which are beyond you know uh, uh, INEC or officials mm -hmm. the factors are we political parties ourselves the electorates themselves the, you know uh, themselves you know uh, you talk of you talk of uh, offic officials being compromised you talk of electorates taking money you know I mean uh, vote buying and things like that there has to be a willing receiver before somebody a, a willing giver you know can give so we also have to reorient orientate ourselves we Nigerians to understand that this process is not about money really it's about yourself it's about your future you know it's not about what you can get just now so we should do everything possible to move away from the uh, uh, courts declaring winners of elections because that is what that is not what the, the 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 intention of the constitution is the intention of the constitution and the system we are practicing of governance of government is that people are supposed to decide and it's not for somebody few people somewhere to come and and say something different you know so we must work towards that and i'm, I'm glad and happy that the chairman of INEC came out in that report and promised Nigerians that this is what they are going to do. Okay. All right. Uh, Professor Andrew Haruna, we've heard uh, Zinaria Bagi says, so far, so good. What's your own assessment? Well, my take on this is that uh, whatever we say, we must practice it. You see, let's walk the talk. You see, Nigerians will always want to see their leaders practice what they say. There are common values if you want to play politics. Again, if you are in leadership, there are expectations. Leadership is a contract between the government and the people. And once this contract has been sealed, it is expected that the leaders must fulfill their part just as the citizens must do their own. Now, uh, what are those common values? I, I'm happy the chairman of the uh, intraparty groups mentioned justice, you know, fairness, equity. Inclusiveness is very, very important. Inclusiveness is very, very important. Then accountability. Are we accountable to the people as political parties? Even within the parties, those of us out there, the kind of intrigues we see sometimes leaves us with a lot of questions in our mind. Is it coming to serve or coming to be served? 
the kind of battle we see between uh, gladiators within the political party. W why should I, I take it like a do or die affair if it is a community service? I consider politics as a teacher to be a community service. And justice, fairness, equity, it should not just be mentioned. It should be seen to be practiced. Again, the political gladiators must be honest. Honesty is not to speak about something good. We also see it in you. We also see it in the politicians. But I know there is a problem of education with our electorates. You know, quite a good number have not understood actually the entire process. Particularly, it is the language of the death. As a linguist, if you speak to the electorate in the language of the head, which is English, or any borrowed language, it goes with the entire process because it has not got into them. If it is the language of the heart, what I mean here, the language which the people know and they understand and they are attached to it emotionally, and they know the process we are operating on, definitely politicians cannot get away from it. All right, thank you. And uh, we go over to Kaduna and link up with Yunus Ustaz Usman and ask the same question to assess so far what uh, we've seen, especially in recent times, uh, with the elections. Uh, you see, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, I witnessed many elections in my few six, only 66 years on earth, but definitely I am not happy with this year's election. I'm not happy uh, right from the word go at the primary level. We saw that candidacy were purchased. Whether we like it or not, we shouldn't mean words because we must leave Nigeria for the generation, generations to come. It, it was not a fair play. It was not a game of being chosen by your party. It was a game of being bought. And that is unfortunate for this country. If we continue this way, I don't know what legacy we are going to leave for our children. Right from the primary election time, I said, oh God, help us, Nigeria is finished. That is even before we came into the, the, the election proper. Because voters, the delegates, became purchasable merchandise. And in such a case, it is very hard to have candidates who will genuinely represent this country. We had that problem. And it is most unfortunate. And say that unless we make corruption in election matters, that is right from the primary stage to the end, death penalty this thing will not end in nigeria it will end at all uh, it is unfortunate Our election the general election was fairer than the primary analysis of those who were i think fairly won but I quickly uh, make this comment. One of my brothers just said that we need a stage where the winners must be declared not by the courts. Let me tell you what really happens. Courts don't come in unless the candidates dispute the result of the elections. It is just like passenger, driver, and uh, the conductor. 
unless the conductor calls them and and the, and, and the driver drives passengers don't just jump into the bus so courts do not just jump into the election and where courts come in really let, let, let nigerians be aware of this when there is this dispute a says i won b says no it's not a who won it is i a manipulated b manipulated b, c did this c did not do that that is where we, 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 the, the candidates, it is we and we alone who drag the courts into the election process. And the duty of the courts at that stage is like sieving uh, crude into a refined oil. The courts will look at your complaint, look at my complaint, and see if your complaint is true that uh, you were rigged out and that is proof that is when we say that the courts declare so 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 the winner again the constitution stipulates qualifications for election where the person who might have won under the constitution did not satisfy the constitutional requirement the courts have the duty to say you did not satisfy this requirement and so your election is invalid. So please, Nigerians should know that courts do not on their own declare results, no matter what. Unless you call them in, unless you drag them in. Please, let us understand that. Right, Ustaz. I'm, I'm, I'll just um, stay with you since we have moved now into... Uh, the next uh, stage of this discussion and that is if you look at what's been going on it would be uh, that perhaps the stakeholders are not playing by the guidelines or could it be that the guidelines are too stiff and the regulations are cumbersome and so Nigerians don't understand them could that be the reason Definitely no. And I say no emphatically. You see, nothing is wrong with our electoral laws. Nothing is really wrong with our constitution, although uh, I will need some amendments to be made. Everything is wrong with our contestants. It is not the guidelines. It is not the constitution. You see, the contestants do not want to follow the guidelines or the constitution. And that is where the problem is. Anybody who tells you that the guidelines are not clear is lying. The guidelines are made in such a way that even if you are not a lawyer, if you read them, you'll understand them. The problem is those we call the actors. The actors are not ready for democracy. And so it is very, very difficult to my own mind, to have democracy in Nigeria. It is difficult, very difficult. What we have is near democracy, but we have not satisfied the requirements of pure democracy as it ought to be, because the actors are not ready to play by the game. Nothing is wrong, nothing, an ordinary a primary school <coughs> pupil, primary six, can read the guidelines, even the constitution, and understand them. But it is our politicians who are our own act enemies, who are the enemies to, to the existence of real democracy in this country. And unless they change their attitude, it will be too unfortunate. Okay, back here in Abuja, Engineer Yaba Gisani, you heard of stars and um, being one of the players, one of the actors in the field. What's your comment about that? Well, you know, it's not uh, uh, a portion blame or something like that. But if truth must be told, courts are supposed to be the last passion you know, of all of us, especially the weak. 
And uh, what has played out in, in especially 2023 elections, you know, until now, has shown something different. Because look at the cases. You know, it is as if the court is not sensitive to this democracy itself. And sometimes what I believe is that, or I think, is that, come what may, that third arm of the government remains. Nothing happens to them. Whether democracy survives or it fails, the courts still remain intact. Otherwise, they won't be behaving the way they are behaving. Look at what is happening in Kano, for instance. Everybody knows Kano is a hot, it's a hot spot. You wouldn't like to create any anarchy in a state like that. But look at where the court has put us. And look at what is happening in other states. So the issue is this, you know, it is not the politicians. It is intended that there should be an institution that should be very strong, strong enough to accommodate the excesses but, but, but of, of the players okay, but so that they will tell the truth. They will come out with what should be, but, not giving judgments that, you know, people on, you know, the, the common man cannot understand or interpret. But, but let me ask justice. This. Do you worry when you find out that there were so many, the huge number of cases in all the elections across the board, yeah. there were always challenges in court? So yes. people ask, is it that the process is faulty or is just that virtually all the no, politicians no, you, you, you don't accept? No, you said it, that first of all, we must, we must agree that in the Electoral Act itself, the amended one, is... I mean, it comes with a lot of innovations, a lot of changes, all aimed at improving the process. And the issue of the guidelines introduced by INEC, which is supposed to administer that act, you know, also, which is supposed to be sacrosanct too, you know, gave Nigerians a different kind of impression from what the law says. That's why the transmission of the results from the polling unit to IRF is what INEC has given to itself because INEC understands that that aspect is very, very important. If you can, if you can tidy the, 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 the activities you know, at the polling unit and make sure that what transpires there does not get out of that place you know, to collation, which is done manually, because anything that is done by man, either environmental error or human error itself, you know, can affect it. And it does affect it. So that is why the issue of IRF becomes something that INEC wants to use as their, 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 their trump card to ensure that we have free, fair, credible election that we want, we want to have. But again, the environmental you know, uh, factors I'm talking about, played out you know, and affected what INEC wants to do at that point because of the high stakes that are there at, you know, in, that, in that situation. So it's the laws, yes, you can say they, they, that's why we're talking about the ambiguity. You know, what INEC did not say very you know, uh, uh, loud to Nigerians is that we are giving ourselves this responsibility to ensure that we get it right. But when the situation becomes too, too unbearable for, for INEC, then they now say, okay, let's use what the law provides, <coughs> which is the manual process. And that is why the reforms, people are asking for the reforms that the, the law must go a step further, not only say, not only giving option of manual at that point, because technology has gone far, far, far ahead of what, what happens there. You know, what happens at the polling units can be cured by technology today. But the law did not provide for that. The law only says that INEC you know, can do accreditation by technology, but the transmission of results from that point to IRF is not in the law. It's in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, what do you call it, in the regulations that INEC brought. Okay. So, so I think as far as we the, we, the politicians are, are concerned, we believe that we are doing what we're, we're not supposed to, to, to do anything other than like, like in a football match or something like that. If you are in the field, you know, 
you play fairly, you know, to ensure that you win. But why, is the, why, why, why do you have linesman? Why do you have the referee and all these things? To ensure that, you know, the, the, the game itself is played according to the rules. But when you have the linesmen that are not, you know, uh, that are doing the thing, you know, when somebody has uh, uh, committed foul and they just look the other way, so is it the, is it the fault of the man that committed the, 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 the foul? No. Not entirely. Okay. But, Prof, so... Yeah, the people, the guidelines, the politicians, or is it I, the law that's so difficult for uh, major stakeholders? To well, understand? there was a saying, if you want an African not to see any secret, write it down. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so the law is there, the guidelines are there. But my question is, those who are playing the gladiators, do they ask themselves these two questions? Do I have a name which should be respected? What legacy do I leave behind? I mean, integrity. Now, when you play politics, you see, as a teacher, I'm not a practicing politician, but just as an observer, as a loyal citizen of the country, I love to see those who are practicing or who those who are seeking for power play it like a sport with their own colleagues. Then it gives us a sense of feeling that this is a fair play. But when it turns out to be a battlefield, then it's so frightening. And uh, what, what causes this? This is the question. Is this our socialization? Is it the orientation we have? Is it that we have left our values? And what are those core values? Or, are, or have we actually neglected inst the institutions within the country that actually gives us our identity as a nation? Now, these are the things, for me, as a voter, I would love to see. But the guidelines are there. The, the law, the constitution is there. Okay. Uh, it's not a blame game. But character is very, very important. You see? Let it not be like those of us in the university. When we give you a degree, we give you a degree based on character and knowledge. Now, if you have knowledge without character, then you have many Yahoo Yahoo people. <laughs> is it not so? Yeah. So, so, so this is the situation. So if there are rules and guidelines, let us obey the rules as players so that we don't blame the linesman or the, <laughs> you know, even <laughs> the referee. You know, because before you come, become a good player, you know the rules. So why should you be rough in the field? Definitely the referee will caution you. All right. Let's, uh, we have a number of reports in addition to the discussion in the studio. Uh, let's, let's get to see the first of them. I think this is from Lagos. Since 1999, when Nigeria returned to democracy, changing of batting from one administration to another, has always been through election which is conducted every four years however some states have been conducting their governorship election outside the general elections calendar due to court pronouncement or change of election results states like kogi bayelsa and imo will be going to the poll come november 11. electoral law came into place to fill this vacuum that's why the INEC were able to come with these laws that create a space for the subsequent elections to be held. Probably there were lacuna in the time these new governors were sworn in. The incumbent must run its full term, which is four years. The Electoral Act's stricto censor is a creation of the law of the National Assembly, no doubt. So the essence of the electoral law is to regulate the conduct of elections in the country. And as it is, there had always been several amendments to make sure it gets better. Legal practitioners are of the opinion on the need to review the electoral law to take care of challenges emanating from obstacle election in line with present situation. One of the fears is that the party machinery might concentrate in these few states to distort the election. That's a fear. Unlike when it's being conducted at the same time around the whole 32 states. We are the law to be slippery on you know, practice on the direction 
that the electoral empire should go. This leaves a lot of a lacuna, it leaves a lot of gap. Stakeholder says, following the electoral law and playing the game according to the rules by all political gladiators will lead to free and fair election. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim. All right. We have uh, another report, this time from Port Harcourt. The three laws governing the electoral process in Nigeria are the Constitution of the Federal Republic, the Electoral Act, and the INEC Guidelines and Regulations. In exercise of the powers conferred by the Constitution, INEC was established, among other functions, to conduct elections into various political offices in the country. In actualizing INEC's role in elections as a supervisory body, according to the Electoral Act, stakeholders in Port Harcourt advocate the need for transparency in the conduct of elections and transmission of the results. Every person in this society wants to see the transparency. Where you come to the public and you say something else and at the practical or in practical something else is being done. I think these are areas that should be looked into. If we are going through electronic voting, it should be purely electronic. The law is there. The Electoral Act as amended is there that says results of the elections must be uploaded and the announcement should be made from the online uh, uh, uploading. So once the laws are being complied with, there will be less uh, issues. They also have the need to pay adequate attention to other issues militating against the smooth conduct of elections, especially malfunction of beavers and other technical devices. And they gain the confidence of many people because of beavers. Beavers, a new technology, that makes rigging Im almost impossible to do. They had the next election, they must do everything possible to use the beavers and transmit the result from what level. As the Bayesa, Imo and Kogi elections draw nearer, it is the view of many that the electoral umpire will get it right and as well win back the trust of Nigerians on the country's electoral process. In Port Harcourt, Ijo Mugweke. <music> All right, we watch those reports and um, we'll see as we go into these uh, elections in Bayelsa and uh, Kugi as well as Imu. What are you looking at in Jinayaba Gisani? What are you expecting the participants to do? How do they <coughs> conduct themselves? And uh, again, with an eye on the electoral umpire. Well, I believe that uh, the players will play by the rules, definitely. But uh, like in all cases, you cannot rule out a situation where you have some uh, infractions. You know? And that's why, that's why you have these institutions that are supposed to correct or punish you know, uh, some of these infractions we're talking about. And this is why I'm saying that we need strong institutions to guarantee that this democracy we want to practice you know, succeeds. Because look at the United States of America. Trump wanted to uh, uh, circumvent the law or take advantage of you know, certain uh, things in the law. But because the institution there is strong, you know, he was not able to get, get away with what he wanted to do. So that's the kind of thing that we need here. Our institutions must be strong. And when you say strong institutions, as far as democracy is concerned, you are talking about the court of law. Because everything, it, this is a constitutional democracy we are practicing. Everything, the, the legal framework, you know, relies on the constitution. The uh, operational framework, you say, relies on the constitution. That is the INEC operations. And even the political parties themselves are creation of the constitution. So uh, the, the entire process is a legal, is a legal process, is a legal uh, issue. So if you do not have people that will so pretend over these processes, meaning that when you go wrong, they can look your eyes, you know, straight in your, eyes, in your face and then tell you that this is wrong. That's what we are looking for. That's, it's, not, it's not so much the politicians. It is not even so much the electoral umpire. It is so much the law itself that we practice. When people go, when, when things go wrong, somebody says, no, 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 that's not what you are supposed to do. 
in, but that's not what we are getting. Really, that's the issue. You okay. see, in, in, you in see, in Nigerians are not satisfied. Comment. Nigerians are not satisfied with the judgments that most of the judgments that the courts you know delivered. Okay, let's put it this way. In his earlier comments, uh, the senior advocate said the trouble begins from the primary level. At that level, where you begin to seek nominations. Already with these upcoming elections in these three, three states, it's been one litigation after the other. Who's the, who's the rightful candidate? Who's not the rightful candidate? Who <coughs> should run? Who should not run? Even as close as the elections are. No, no, are. I don't have any issues with that. You know, seriously. I don't have no, no, nobody so should have any issues with that. Does it not put... It's about Jojo. Does, politi politics is about Jojo. But does it not about show war. that even after the elections, the trend will continue? No, no, no. After the elections, I mean, we, we expect that... Uh, uh, we, as we are maturing, because Nigeria is really, you know, we are, we are really maturing as far as this democracy goes. For look at we are, the seventh round of elections, what we are having as a general elections in this country today. For 24 years now, we've been practicing this. In fact, see what people sometimes maybe may not know is that we have spent a hundred years, you know, in practicing uh, politi in, uh, 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 partisan, you know, uh, politics in this country. The first political party was registered in 1923 by Herbert Macaulay. Today, 2023, that we, we, have, we have spent a hundred years. So we are not babies as far as practicing this uh, system, okay. uh, this, this uh, uh, politics is concerned. And that's why IPAC is coming out to celebrate a centenary you know, uh, uh, of the uh, evolution of political parties in Nigeria, a hundred years of the evolution of political parties in Nigeria, so that you know we've come of age. And what is happening, people tend to say, oh, politicians, they do this. The, the politicians will do what they are supposed to do. That is, try to see how they can win. You know? But you have law enforcement agents, like the police, like the courts. I always go back to the court because that is where you know, the, the, the savior of the country is. The country can only be as strong as its laws. You know? And then and, and, and when these laws are enforced. So if you don't enforce it, forget it. All right, Prof. Uh, <clears throat> well, I just wish that uh, before the electorates go to the ballot boxes to cast their votes, lessons might have been learned from what we have seen in the previous elections. Mm -hmm. Because this is very important. Uh, if we don't learn from history, we are bound to repeat the same mistakes. If there were serious intrigues in other states, and those intrigues has brought bloody results. So the, for, the coming elections in these states should learn from what we have seen in the past. But the question is, for many of us out there, this keeps repeating itself. Uh, the chairman just said, uh, we have been practicing politics for 100 years now. Yeah, on record, yes. Uh, but has it gone into our blood to really understand what politics is all about. I have had politicians use primordial sentiments to arouse the sentiments of their voters. And at the end of the day, they see them as messiahs. So there is no central pillar which binds every corner of the society. Okay, uh, but, but whether we like it or not, we will still have politicians. But the question I always want to put forward to any politician is to ask himself, I need, do I have a culture of shame? Th th this is the question. Yes. So I don't have an answer, but it's a, an individual response. Okay. It's not that condemning uh, politicians. No, 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 no. The fact that they are leaders, those of us who are out there, will do that but let the exercise the sports be played based on the lessons we have learned in history and also what we would like to the kind of legacy we would like to leave for both our political parties for all of us an individual and for the people we govern now let's let's look at um, this from the angle of first the participants themselves the politicians the electorate and uh, third, the umpire, the electoral body itself. Do you worry, Nidayaba Gisani, about reports of violence already? And uh, this is a recurring thing. Each time elections are at hand, we begin to see 
violence and all the time politicians talk about no we need to get this done without bloodletting is it that they just pay lip service to these things they say because when you look at the cause of the violence either somebody has whipped up the sentiments of some group of people or some group of people are displeased with the pronouncement of some politician and before you know it, it spirals out of control. Well, I think the, 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 the fault really here is uh, at the doorstep of the government in power. Because like, like the uh, professor here says, what have we learned from the past you know, uh, experiences that we have had with elections? People have, were killed, violence you know, took place, but what happened to those people that were responsible for those violence? Nigerians believe, as we have been made to believe, politicians in particular, especially those in government, believe that they can get away with anything, including murder. And they do get away with it. That is not what you see happening in other countries. So if we want to get it right, we must prove that, yes, we are responsible people. And people we have in government are also responsible people. And it's not that it's to you, you know, might is right. That's what we've been, that's what is been, that's what is playing out. So, if Nigerians do not hold power to account, there's no way you can get the, the kind of ideal situation you want in the, in the political arena, especially when the contest is taking place. Because when the contest, when you are in the field, I mean, <laughs> you want to win. Because the elections is about winning, it's not about losing. And the politician wants to win. So somebody else must be responsible for making sure that he, he, he does whatever he's doing in accordance with the law. And if he, even if he go you know, uh, uh, against the law, he will face you know, certain punishments. But here in this country, you will get away. Somebody will make a phone call to the police or to whoever, and then they, they will just let them go. That has to stop before we can get it right. Because the constitution, there is nowhere in the world where people are, are just uh, uh, you know, expected to behave you know, in the manner that you call normal without punishment and reward. That is inborn in us. If I know I'm going to be punished, I know how I conduct myself. So, but here, that's, what, that's why I keep saying that the system itself and people that are put in charge of this system must step up to the plate and deliver and not be, 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 be compromised by some, uh, some uh, ephemeral things that you know, really do not add up you know, to anything. All right, let's go back to Kaduna and link up again with uh, you know, Ustaz Usman. And uh, this time we have uh, Kogi, Bielsa and Imu upcoming. What would you like to see in the conduct of these elections, particularly Kogi? Otherwise, I'm from Kogi, and the history of election in Kogi State for the past eight years, nothing to write to my at all. Very unpleasant. Maiming, killing with impunity, and like my. My brother said, nobody is punished. In Kogi, for instance, it has been like uh, uh, what Colonel Edward says, that most laws are like cobwebs, big enough to catch the small flights and too weak to, to catch the big ones. And that is not good for any country. That is not good. Like the last speaker said, we must, our law must practically be able to punish whoever has done anything wrong, particularly in election matters. This issue of uh, by all means, so election is not I must win by all means. 
you are seen. I'm qualified to rule you. If you start killing those people you are going to rule, is it the forest you are going to rule? So even the contestants themselves have disappointed many Nigerians, including poor me. They have taken it as an issue of or die, an issue of you, you, you either elect me or you die. Playing out is is most unfortunate. Most of the states and have not apologized to any, are not conducting any free and fair election. The person in power always does whatever he wants to do, and is never punished. And then I'm sorry to come in. That is where of immunity clause. I deliver now see the time of uh, David Mark that this impunity, particularly when it comes to commission of crime, must be removed from every public officer. Unless that is done, it is not easy at all to punish most of these people because people who, who do this or people who sponsor the small ones who do this are the ones mainly who are powerful and always get away with it. I just hope that we will not allow that one to happen in Gogi, Bayelsa, and Imo again. But I'm not pessimistic, but definitely if Things continue to go. I All right, We're having some issues there with the uh, uh, reception. Already. Okay, it's back. Okay, well, we hope that will uh, clear up soon enough, so we can get the full contributions from uh, Yunus know, Ustaz Usman, but. Back here in, uh, in Abuja, it's uh, one of those things that uh, people have spoken out against, hoping that with these elections coming up, I just again have another opportunity to test the whole process of electioneering, the voting and declaration of results. Uh, so far, it's been going with that sequence and a lot of disappointments have been had. But now again, there are assurances and reassurances that this time would be different. On the part of the people and the electorate, what should they hold on to? They should believe in the INEC. And why, why am I saying so? Believe in the INEC because before 2023 elections, you remember INEC conducted elections in uh, uh, Edo and also Ondo. And the transmission of results you know, uh, took place. We didn't have issues. So which means INEC can do the same thing in, 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 a, in a small uh, smaller uh, 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 scope. But why didn't it happen in the larger scope? That's the issue I think INEC will have to address. You know, that's for another day, actually. But these ones coming, I think we can, we can, we can believe in what INEC says they are going to do. They will do it. I want the votes will count, definitely. The only thing that we need to check ourselves is the issue of violence. And use of violence does not rest with political, political parties. How to check violence is not, it's not entirely with political parties or INEC. The Constitution has given that responsibility to another agency of government. And that is the government itself at the center you know, who has the responsibility to, 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 to ensure that, you know, the, the environment is safe for Nigerians? That's Mr. President himself. Because the police is still one police, you know, all over the country. Not the, we don't have a state police that you say it's not our responsibility. It's your responsibility. So if we have violence, then ask Mr. President. I'm glad the National Security Advisor came out to say that they are promising Nigerians that votes 
will count. They want f uh, free, fair, and credible elections this time around. So we listen. We, we, we wait and see what happens. You know, as far as we are concerned in IPAC, we believe democracy is progressing. We are moving forward, believe me. We are making a lot of, uh, 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 we are covering a lot of grounds in terms of, you know, maturing. Because this country is looked up to by the entire world as a leader. You know, and, we, and, we, and, and we earn it, we deserve it. If you look at who we are, you look at the social, you know, uh, aspect of it, you look at the economic arena, you look at the political arena, you know, we have what it takes to be leaders, to be a leader in the, in the, in the community of nations, among the community of nations. And that's what we are. So what we are expecting, and I'm, and I'm assuring Nigerians, political parties will do what we are supposed to do. Because we don't want to rock the boat. Like I've always said, if democracy fails, when it fails, we are the first casualties. Although Nigerians are the biggest losers. But we are the casualty, so we wouldn't want anything to, to really upset what we are doing, you know, uh, to, to, to bring down democracy. No, you know. But others who are given responsibility to ensure that this democracy really works as, as you know, uh, contemplated by the Constitution should also do their own bid. And that is coming up to do what they are supposed to do. And that's why I said strong institutions are very important in democratic processes, you know, in a democratic governance. And justice, mm -hmm. because without justice, you can't have peace. So this is what, you know, the, the, it's, not, it's not the politicians, but in particular. So I know Kogi and the Bayelsa and Imo, yes, Nigerians, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, you know we, as we go along, I think that we, should, we may have to apply this uh, doctrine of necessity by way of rearranging so that you don't create a situation where these big political parties will use the machinery and then to scare you know people you know in this uh, because obviously the election that's what it, 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 it turns out to be mm -hmm. it gives the opportunity to use all their money all their uh, powers all their everything and they have everything available to them so the constitution may have to be amended to see how do we bring back you know these offices elections into the 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 the, 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 the normal cycle of elections. Well, at this point, we'll take a short break. When we return, the phone lines will be open. It means you can join in the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, Arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Network Issue Oriented Innovation Talk Show. Thanks for staying with us. At this time, we'll soon open the phone lines and uh, you can get to join in the conversation. The numbers will be on your screen. You can take advantage of them and call in and air your views on the subject matter. Uh, and we always remind you when it's time to join in the conversation. We say if you're phoning in tonight and your call gets through to the studio, do us a favor, turn down the volume of your TV set. That's the way to avoid the hurlback or the echo. And we also encourage you to keep it short, straight to the point, and uh, not to bother too much about the greetings. Just a simple hello and you're good to go. 
So we'll start off this time with our next report. I believe this is from Enugu. The electoral guidelines in Nigeria serve as a framework that governs the conduct of elections at various levels of government. They are instrumental in ensuring the transparency, fairness, and legitimacy of the electoral process. Among the key components of these guidelines is the power conferred on the Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, to organize and conduct elections. The election process is governed by a set of guidelines that adheres to the constitutional principles, including the use of electronic voting systems to enhance the integrity of elections. Chapter 7 of the Nigerian Constitution outlines the provision for challenging electoral outcomes as well as ways for resolving such disputes. These include the right to challenge the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as well as the burden of proof. The, the Nigerian Supreme Court is the high priesthood of our legal system. The Nigerian Supreme Court is the final arbiter in every matter that goes before the court in this country. Court of Appeal Election Petition Presidential Tribunal has already declared Bola Metinubo as the winner of the February 25th election in Nigeria. Now what the Apex Court has done is to uphold the decision of the lower court. According to some legal luminaries, the Supreme Court's verdict, which upheld Tinubu's election, was based on a thorough examination of the electoral guidelines and constitutional principles. The verdict, they say, underscored the importance of a credible electoral process and the need for petitioners to provide concrete evidence of electoral malpractice when challenging election outcomes. The petitioners they didn't do due diligence in their petition. From the one, I'd always maintained it that you had an election conducted at polling units. I'd always believed that you should go and get some results from that polling unit that contravenes the results of INEC. And then when you fail to do that, you're making a very huge mistake. Supreme Court's verdict upholding Bola Ahmed Tinubu's election as president of Nigeria demonstrates the significance of electoral guidelines and reaffirms the importance of transparent and credible elections conducted in accordance with established rules and regulations. The Constitution is the ultimate authority in resolving electoral disputes, ensuring that the will of the people is upheld while maintaining the rule of law. In Enugu, Kelechi Ochiara. All right. Uh, from the report there, we've just uh, seen Nigerians and the respondents particularly uh, giving it to the judiciary, the, the whole process, saying that's it. But the question here, and many people have said this too, is when will we get to the situation where there will be minimum recourse to the courts? Because if the system is clean, clear, transparent and simple enough, why do we have so many challenges then? Well, I, I believe that as political parties, uh, we are doing our level best in the sense that we are very, very passionate about this democracy. We want it to succeed, believe you me. You know, if there's anything in the world that politicians want to succeed is democracy because that's where you can exist as you know, a politician, and even as a human being. So, all these things happening that you are talking about, like, what's, what stopped the security agencies when the primaries that took place, we'll make reference to that. The EFCC people were there. I saw people wearing that red, uh, something that EFCC wear. The ICPC, because they don't wear, you know, any 72, you know, they were there. The police were there. So, you mean they didn't see the dollars that were moving around, the, the, the words of, you know, the amount of uh, dollars that were exchanging hands in that, in those primaries conducted by both uh, parties? Why didn't they take action? You know, it's not the politicians. 
that will do will will will, uh, will uh, do anything against themselves because yeah, but it's they, the politicians who brought the uh, the, the money for the vote buy because they know they can get away with it. That's why I said we hold let's hold the system responsible. There is no country that can be strong unless the institutions are very strong. That is the issue. We must add, we must accept this this truth. You know, like you said, there's a ground norm. There's also ground truth. And the grand truth is that these norms must be enforced, which we have failed to do. That's why I said it is not the politicians per se that you, must, you, are, you, are, you are going to uh, hold responsible. No. Let the, let the agencies that are being paid by, our, by taxpayers' money do their work. And so long they don't do their work, so long we'll be in this rigmarole. Yeah, well, uh, in this discussion, I really don't want to go into the game of blame, okay. but rather to look at what are the causes. You know, uh, what, what we see in the public are the symptoms and, you know. It's, I, I always ask this, is it the people? Is it that? And of course, if you say it's the people, then it would make sense to say, well, the politicians are drawn from the people, of course, they're, they're, they're Nigerians. Okay, let me, let, let me put it this way, pardon me being a teacher, uh, to classify the category of people as we are, there is a level we call pre-conventional, I would define that, then there is the conventional, and then there is post-conventional. Now, conventional uh, pre-conventional, when you are born as a child, okay, you are blank. Nothing is in your head. But you start to get socialized right from home, from your community. So what you get there is a question of uh, reward and punishment. Don't touch this light, you avoid it. If you do this, I will give you chocolate. Now you respond to this kind of reward and punishment uh, mm -hmm. behavior. But as you grow older to primary school, community school, then you start to obey the rules and culture of your own environment. Okay? That is the conventional now. You, 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 you are, if your action is defined by those people around you. So you have gone from level one, the family. You have now come into peer group, community, and school in terms of socialization. Now, if you move from that village level or from that local government level to a state, to a place like Abuja, we expect your behavior and attitude should be different. By this time, we mean you are sophisticated enough from your exposure to act post-conventionally, which means that your premodal sentiments does not drive you into any action you do. But unfortunately now, we have people who are exposed, well-traveled, if you call a books, educated, but then the behavior has not shifted from that pre-conventional or, con uh, or, or conventional. And that is where the problem is, the socialization. So we have to look at how does an average Nigerian child mm -hmm. grow in a society like ours? Is there any value of, for hard work? Uh, is there any value for respect to authority? Value for respect for national symbols? And if these things are missing, definitely you will find that people will go the cheaper way. Okay. Now, I conduct research. People, now they don't, people don't give me data. They expect quick money, they collect money, that's what they want. Where did they get this? <laughs> Well, <laughs> the socialization. Okay, we, we have our first caller tonight, Ganga from Port Harcourt. Ganga, I hope the name is correct. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, I appreciate your program and uh, I always watch this Tuesday night every time. And uh, one of my contributions to this is that uh, democracy is no longer practiced in Nigeria. A situation where the leader, the governor of the state, his party will win council, all the council, will win all the House of Assembly, 
we win all the, all the local government chairmen. Can we still say that is a democracy? If there is no essential person, at least one or two in all the other parties, until ANEC, National ANEC, we, we conduct election for the local government and uh, all the other ones. That will continue to be. And that's why you see only one party in one, in one state. So this should be corrected also, so that we can maintain a good uh, uh, democracy. And uh, the other one concerning the, the sharing of Naira, those who are to police people are saying, also got their own. So they will not preserve any person by sharing it. They got their own. Other people, or the voters got their own. Every person is involved in receiving the dollar. So these are some of the things that are comforting us. Especially that election of, of states. Let national unit take over instead of state. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much, Ganga. Thank you. That. Thank you. Yeah. I'm hoping that the links with Kaduna are better now. Uh, we can go back to... Uh, Ustaz, you know, Susman. Yes, you're there. Well, again, the whole process seems to revolve heavily around the guidelines and the judiciary interpreting what the law and the guidelines say. And questions have been raised about the different views. Uh, sometimes they say you never can tell because uh, the interpretation now begins to vary at every stage. Again, we ask, is it that the way the guidelines are couched are such that there are loopholes that may be exploited by those who seek power through all means? Definitely, I concede that there are loopholes that, uh, that are being used at the expense of the generality of Nigerians. And uh, if, like, like, like section 38, subsection 1 of the, of, of the guideline, it gives INEC the power to transmit this election election results electronically and he says or oh, what INEC decides if INEC sees that it is not possible to do it electronically INEC is given the option to do it manually that is an option that is one of the loopholes and I think we should try as much as possible to amend particularly Oh dear. Oh dear. It's, uh, well, again, having these challenges with the links there, but if, if, you, if you follow the trend of uh, his argument, he, he thinks this is one provision that should be amended, and uh, Engineer Abagi also had spoken about that. Say, let's not give it, make it an optional thing. Let, go a step further and say, Yes, the results must be transmitted, you know, electronically. That way, it gives no room for another option. And so, many Nigerians say, if that were the case, then the transmission would be taken much more seriously, and better preparations will be made uh, for any, you know, eventuality. What do you say, Prof? Well, uh, I see this game of transmitting results electronically or manually like the issue of language policy in Nigeria. That an indigenous language should be the medium of instruction and uh, communication or education in the country. But then a caveat was put until when the necessary you know, <laughs> conditions have been met. And those conditions since how many years they have never been met. Yeah, so, so and then there so. were, until now, in the, that great desire is there to see that it works. But this kind of caveat definitely 
people will try to go around it. Let, let, let's get this call from Francis, calling in from Abuja. Francis, are you there? Yes. Is there? Right, go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Francis. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Mm. My contribution about this okay. is the INEC. The INEC. The INEC is our problem. The people of this country have been trying to make things right. But I think the INEC should sit right. Because we can see what happened in the last election. The INEC have totally disappointed us. That is my contribution. All right. Thank you, Francis from Abuja. Well, Prof. Francis says INEC is the problem. Well, <laughs> if we ask INEC, they will also tell us that there is a problem with us, the electorate. <laughs> okay. Well, so, I, think, <laughs> I, I think it's the National Assembly. National Assembly is the problem. Uh -huh. Okay. You see, and you think it's the it, National, it's Assembly. In the national Assembly. Assembly? Yeah, it is national. They made the law. Okay. And they didn't want direct transmission of results from the polling unit from the, from the beginning because the general had to fight so much before they accepted it. They wanted to see how it will not uh, be, uh, be carried out. To the extent of calling people that have nothing to do with uh, lawmaking to come and testify that uh, the equipment is not uh, capable of uh, handling such transmissions. So it is National Assembly. So Nigeria should look the right direction, not INEC, not the politicians, not anybody. The lawmakers are the, are the corporate here. If the National Assembly, as you say, uh, should take the blame for this. Who are those in the National Assembly? Nigerians? No, they, they politicians. Are <laughs> so they are Nigerians <laughs> like us. And, and they are so politicians. <laughs> All right, so. So, I, I think uh, the issue, why is it that when Nigerians are outside Nigeria, you find that they flow with the rules and regulations of in, in, in those places. Yeah, because the, the institutions Be, are strong there. Aha, uh -huh, the institutions are strong. Now, the rule of law. It's but then the, our orientation is very critical in this matter. Orientation in the sense that everyone wants to do things the way he or she feels. There, is, there are traffic lights all over Abuja now. But we still need to put policemen, road safety to be at those junctions. Why? Because people will see the red and they will still move because they think they have a big car or they have a big engine or things like that. So this is not a right thing to do. So no, if, no, it's not, if... It's not Nigerian mentality. It's everywhere in the world. The reason why it works in other climes that you think you know, that the, the lights are obeyed mm -hmm. is because they know that you can't get away. Mm -hmm. that, those places don't even have police. They have their cameras. Mm -hmm. The moment you run the light... You know, you see a ticket in your, your mailbox mm -hmm. <laughs> the following morning. So, so, <laughs> so, we, so, much. We are so it's the fact that they know if you commit any crime or you go along the law, the, 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 uh, against the law, you get punished. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next caller is from Maiduguri, yeah. Reverend right, yeah. Mada calling in from Maiduguri. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Good evening. Go ahead. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello? G good evening. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm my, my contribution here is uh, serious. There are people that think that they are bigger than this country. And uh, this country is bigger than anybody that thinks is bigger than this country. We should understand that. We are Nigerians, and the, it is our responsibility to be transparent to our children and the next generation. That's my part of contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Mada. Well, again, it's taken back to one or two things that have been mentioned here, that um, people do not get sanctioned for bad behavior, and so it spreads. When it comes to, uh, again, the conduct of 
participants, key participants in the elections. Uh, okay, all right. Let's let's see if we can get this call in from Abeokuta. Okay, morning from Abeokuta. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> my contribution is that INEC is the problem we have in this country. We have no any other problem. The other man sitting by the, I mean, uh, far from you, the Sani, something Sani. Yeah, the IPAC chairman. The contribution chairman. to this program, I don't so understand it, and I don't like it. He's talking about 100 years of democracy. Then what are we achieved? Did we achieve anything on that aspect? We did not achieve anything. And okay, you talk about sharing money on the uh, election time, I mean, uh, primaries. Is it me or who? He knows them. He knows those who share the money, those who corrupt the, com uh, the country. And the other man that you, were co you are connecting, far away at that Kaduna also, is talking something about immunity. They should come out that immunity clause so that they can be able to punish the offenders. So that the country will move forward. Everybody knows what happened in, for the past election. Everybody cried. We voted on sun, grain of sun. We voted. Some of us even almost slept on the uh, polling unit. But still yet, we did not get what we want. So the country should sit right and let us get what we want. It's enough. That is what I'm saying. So thank you. That is my contribution. My contribution is that I next should sit right. Is a problem, the major problem. Everybody knows that INEC is a problem. It's not me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Maurice from Abeokuta. Well, Engineer Yabagi. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the last speaker uh, uh, is expressing his own you know, mm -hmm. uh, anger. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and all he's saying is that why is it that the system is not working? You know? And uh, the issue is our own mentality and people put in charge of this system. Systems are like everybody has agreed here. Beaver is wonderful. You know, uh, transmission of results from the polling unit to the RF is a wonderful thing, isn't it? But people are supposed to do it. And people who are supposed to do it must realize the fact that they will be accountable for whatever they do. If there's no accountability, you know, if people are not hold to account, that's the situation we will continue to be, which is what we are complaining about now. So, you see, and again, Siri, it's not just about transmitting the results. It's also about collation. Today, collation is done manually. It's added. They, they use, uh, what do you call it, maybe uh, their calculators or trying to add to this, but that, that. It should did not this age when we are talking about AIs, artificial intelligence. Addition is the simplest thing that the computer can do for you. Simplest. So why is it that our system, the automated system, does not add? You know, and when you know that end of the day, it is this collation that determines who wins, because that is the, that is the total totality of what comes from the pooling units that will now be added together to declare the winner. So why is it the computer, is this something, it's not, it's not difficult at all for the computer to do. So in the reforms that we are doing, I mean, we are doing to know, we must also make collation to be, you know, uh, uh, sacrosanct, that it must be done. Not manually, because if you do manually, it's like the saying that it's not those who cast the vote that determine the winner, but those who count. You know, so we should take people out of counting. Let the machine do the counting. And if you don't agree with what the machine says, I'm saying that the machine must be the, the, the first port of call that the law must recognize. Then if that's this put, then okay, bring your manual records now. Let's see. Okay. We'll talk about that. Um, next call is from Onicha. Godwin calling in. Hello. Hello, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, uh, I want to say that uh, everything is wrong with our electoral system. The judiciary, the electorate, the politician, as well as the INEC. 
Now, this uh, go to court syndrome is causing, causing a, lot, a lot of harm to the electoral system. So, uh, the, the, the INEC know that they are not getting it right. And therefore, so for a particular person to prove his point, it's very difficult to get to go to court, even when they were protesting, like they were, what had happened in the recent presidential election. Now, the, the national assembly were transmitted that the, for the president to have a problem. When, when the people were protesting in, in the uh, collision center, the, 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 the chairman ignored them. He went ahead and postponed the election at, at the end of the, at the end of the, 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 the month, they announced the, the election. Now, uh, another one, that was the, the court, the, the last uh, governorship election here in the state, the, the, the person that came to was and were returned as, uh, as the winner. Now, uh, people that, were, that uh, did not uh, contest in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, that primary, they were, they were, they contested for, for presidency. But if they, they, they have a ticket to, to, to run for a Senate, how, 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 how does this happen? So these are the things that happen now. People that, all the people were just gathering money for that election. They were not interested in improving the life of the people because they know that it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a cash, cash and carry. The highest bid of the carry. So it's a now grab it and, and carry it around. That's it, that's the, that's the happening. So we must come back because we're going to be tried. Let's stop the economy with the truth. You see, when, when the people are not boldly come to the to to, 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 to fight their vote because they have the, they, they know that their, their vote will not count. Then there's no need of uh, calling up to come and, come and vote. So both the electorate, some some people know that this person is criminal. They cannot give, they cannot deliver. But because it's their own person, so they want to be close to the power. They support at our top. Even when they do that, cannot give give anything to the nation. So this is the thing we are, we are, we are experiencing. So let's also as well the the the, 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 the constitution as the electoral act. Now the, the politician the the, 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 the politi when we talk about national assembly, we cannot separate from the politician. They are the only in, in the national assembly. Now they were they were pushed to accept the accept the transition. So they never that that's what that's not that's not support them. They were pushed. So they now they now give option that uh, an INEC can can uh, cannot cannot go do, do, go go the other way. So that's the this is the thing that are causing confusion. So as well, it's supposed to be at the end of the, the, the whole thing before you now swear in a president. You don't uh, at the midst of the, after the election you now swear in a particular president. The president will not be on the seat of power and begin to use the state money to pursue his case. His case. Why all his other fellow contestants will be using their money? So we now intimidate both the body judiciary and the other person. So at the end of the day to be the to be declared the winner. So I think we have to sit down and get it right from the from the electorate. To the to the to the, uh, the, the to the the institution. Now, if you have a, a, a strong personality in, in Nigeria, not a strong institution, when you have a strong institution, that will help the matters. Please thank you for for giving this um, right. chance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Godwin. Well, I I do really hope that um, we can get these links clear this time because the last. Uh, Caller has just raised some very fundamental issues which uh, Ustaz would, uh, would very much want him to comment on. The frequently expressed view of displeasure with uh, pronouncements coming from the law courts. And uh, the new fad now has been made into a fad go to court. Um, in other words, if I say good morning, Ustaz, good morning or good evening, I'd say, Are you sure it's evening? It's a go to court. We'll prove that it's evening. And then the question and the other fundamental issue he raised about disposing of all electoral cases before uh, winners are sworn in. What do you say about that? Yes, I'm, I'm very grateful. May, may I start with the second one? Mm -hmm. Disposal of, of cases, particularly election and election related cases before the uh, whoever you say my one is one. That is very important. And I've always drawn the time without number. But the problem we have is that our legislators only take what they think suits them and ignore what they think will not suit them. It, uh, you see, they, they waste uh, commission report on electoral reforms. Specifically said, before any person is sworn in, please make sure that all the cases against him are concluded. Unless you do that, it is very, very difficult to convince people that 
that everything went on well. I suggested before, I suggested it in Ghana and it worked. The issue is that at least six months before anybody is sworn in, all the cases are concluded. Or you don't bring somebody uh, on seat and, and then you, you, you say that you are prosecuting him or you are prosecuting, uh, conducting cases against him. The, the courts, the courts may be fair. The, the courts may not have any ulterior motive, but many Nigerians will say, ah, ah, he is the one in power. And, and, and that, that is where, unless the members of the National Assembly and our bosses sitting with you there do this amendment quickly, people Many people will never trust these electoral processes because they will say it will always favor the person in power. And if transparency is transparency, not what a single person construes as transparency, unless you do this, Nigerians will never construe our election processes as transparent. I will not. Then the, the the, the, the second issue is uh, this issue of uh, uh, I, I think you go to court go, uh, go to court what going to court means now to an ordinary person is that even if, if, if you go to court you cannot do anything and unless that na narrative changes it will not be fair for our for our for the driving of our, of our democracy. It, 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 a state must be created that people will fear when you say, I'm taking you to court. But most people today don't fear when you say, I'm taking you to court. But fortunately, fortunately, I don't have any brother or sister uh, on the bench you have known. <laughs> I think among the three arms of government, Supreme Court has been the only one sustaining democracy. But this year in particular, this year in particular, the allegations against many election petition tribunals are frightening and is very, very unfortunate. I hope, I hope that this will be investigated immediately. Unfortunately, what the NJC, that is the National Judicial Council, does, once any judge is shown to have been corrupt, they, they deal with him immediately. But the problem we have is, how do you prove this? Because what happens mainly and unfortunately is that some of us, some of us lawyers, connive. Aloma Muntar uh, cautions uh, against this, when she was the chief justice of, of, of Nigeria. They mean, you see, when you, as a lawyer, who could knife with, uh, with, with somebody to do these wrong things, you, you know one thing we do not know, you don't know, I'm not a reverend father, I'm not, but if you use one cup of that money to buy kose, you know kose akara, cake, big cake for your child, that child will be destroyed while you are still alive. Well, like, whether you like it or not, we'll say one cup out, uh, out, out of it. It is unfortunate. And I'm, I'm in, in the lecture I delivered in, uh, in, in Umuahia last week, I said every member of the tribunal must be investigated and put such light on five years before the, the, the time they are appointed and five years after they are leaving office as members of these tribunals. In okay. UK, right. China, UK, China, and so on, uh, have, have this in, in, in their laws. And, okay. and they call it, hello? And they call it, uh, they, they, they call it laws against living above your, your, your earning capability. We just need to establish that now. All right. Thank I, you, sir. And, and, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. And 
in, in most cases, in most cases, in most cases, you see, there are instances where the court's hands are tied because the lawyers either did not advise their clients properly or did not do their homework. For, for instance, you may have a very good case. If, if I had stolen a goat before contesting an election, and you did not do that until after you had gone to court, you didn't talk about my stealing goat, you didn't bring evidence of my stealing a, 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 a goat, until you go to the appeal court. In my few election years experience from 1983, Paul to now, no court is allowed, no court is allowed to entertain that document again. After 21 days of the declaration of results, and when your client uh, makes this mistake, it's not the money gives you, it does not fit you, only got fence for you. Tell him, yes, you have this document, but we can't use it again. <laughs> he may hurt you. Later on, when he sees that what you have said is true, he will come back to you. He does not fend for you. I think uh, most of us lawyers are to blame. Okay. Uh, when, let, uh, let, 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 yes, let us stop on having politicians or, or, or anybody who is... Who, who is taking us back. 100 years, the other person said, yes, it's like 100 years, a child who has reached 100 years and catching polio. Uh, well, that, 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 that is abnormal. Definitely we have learned nothing at all. In fact, it, it is, we take two steps forward, one step backward. That is what we have been experiencing in, in those 100 years. And it is getting worse day by day. And, and then may I add this? One of the solution is this. Unless we avoid this issue of uh, kakistocracy, that, that is government where you choose the, the least qualified person, you won't get anywhere. And the only way to do so is forget about money back. There must be individual or private candidacy. The, 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 our National Assembly people have always refused uh, this. Okay. And those capable, those who are totally capable, don't have money to, to uh, spend on, on, on election bribe at the primary and, and, and the rest of them. We, we know most of those people, but okay. those are the people who, who, who will not be able to do that at all. All right, I, I Ustaz, at, at this point, let, let's see if we can get this call in. This caller has been waiting for quite some time. Khalid, I, I'm, I'm not sure if Khalid is still there. Khalid, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do apologize for, uh, thank you for holding on, but it was important to let uh, Ustaz make that point uh, about what needs to be amended. But please go ahead. Okay. Yes, Khalid. Khalid, are you still with us? Khalid from Bauchi. Okay. Yes. Okay, good morning. Yes, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, please, I w I want to commend the effort of the IPAC National Chairman for uh, articulating the proper point. Uh, however, I don't know. Uh, Sometime in the issue of uh, the National Collection Center or the State Collection Center, you can get an observation from the uh, people that um, uh, agent of uh, our political parties to make an effort to make an observation. But in the process of the collection center from the national level, they can just ignore these uh, kind of collections or issues raised by the agent of the political party. I don't know what IPAC is doing related to this uh, particular issue, because uh, you can observe something and present to the, uh, the, in, in the collection center, but no, but at least, uh, no, not will be considered, and the, it will go like uh, it, it could spike, uh, it could the appears. So I don't know why the actual problem and what I think is doing related to this. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Khalid. And uh, the IPAC chairman will address that. Yeah. Thank you, Khalid, for asking this question. Because uh, as a matter of fact, we are putting in place a situation room, mm. and this situation room is going to have uh, what we call election 
result management system, whereby results from the pooling units, like it says, will now be, tra be sent to that porter because we're having our own porter. We're not going to rely solely on INEC porter now, so that because uh, the law allows observers allows you know and if, so if obser other observers can come something can come from europe european union can come and observe and say this thing this one so we who are the key players you know we have decided now to have our own porter so that whatever is coming up because elections like i said before are won or lost at the polling unit so if you can't get hold of what happens at polling unit then you are home and dry because even if you go to the court you have something like what the uh, supreme court judgment has shown that if you can bring a result from what what you witnessed, you know, to them, what is endorsed by INEC, then your your your, your case is, uh, is is as good as uh, one. So that is why we have gone to that stage, you know, of having this uh, election uh, result management system ourselves to complement what INEC is doing, and to also ensure that some of our 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 agents that mm -hmm. are there, who may be just they feel that they are they are there, they don't have anybody. You know that is uh, helping them. This system will help. That's what we, we are coming. All right. With. So yeah. you know, because like Khalid says, sometimes an agent will raise a point of yeah. observation that is, and it is discounted. Exactly. Exactly. So so this time around, we'll have all such you know uh, issues you know documented and then also put on the portal for everybody to see. You know, everybody will see it. All the parties, everybody will see it. That this is the true position of things, not uh, what is coming out. Well, as, as a politician yourself, you heard uh, what uh, the uh, senior advocate said about uh, the desirability of dispensing of uh, election matters before uh, people are sworn in. What, yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts about that? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the most natural thing to do, the most normal thing to do, the, the sensible thing to do, you know, given the fact that we don't actually respect our laws. We respect people. You know, so this is, I was telling uh, the prof here that it's like a lizard, you know, when the lizard is still a lizard, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the ground, you can catch the lizard mm -hmm. and do it. But once it has entered water and becomes a, 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 a yeah, uh, an alligator mm -hmm. or, or, or something like that, you, it becomes something bigger than what you can handle. So that's the case. So, so we must, first of all, dispense with all the issues surrounding the winner before you allow the person to assume the office, you know, the man now is the one who, will, uh, you know, the, the, the chief justice of federation or anybody for that matter. In fact, given the law, the kind of system we are operating, where you you have just one person, the chief executive, you know, who is so powerful, and you want the the, the poor man there to, to challenge him, you know, and he's still you know on the seat. So so this is even I mean it just that's why I say the the normal thing to do is what the prof uh, uh, Ustaz Ustaz has said, and and again somebody talked about the issue of the elections we conduct at the local government level, you know unfortunately that's the closest tier, you know uh, of governance to the people. That's where democracy should have been 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 practiced or elections should be, should 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 uh, be what they are supposed to be. That vote must count at that level so that. Electorates now will begin to now believe in their, their votes. But that's, that is the most abused level of elections that we have in this country. It's like an organized crime. You know, nothing counts there like votes. And you see the democracy. So people laugh at what we are doing. They, we make a mockery of this thing in the eyes of the people. And then so that when they come to the state level and other levels, they don't think that they must believe, they don't believe that the votes will count. That's why some of them even collect this money. Because they see that, okay, they conducted this election in my local government, in my state, and all these parties that we see that are parties and that we know the man that is contesting there is somebody we like, you know, we voted for him, and he's not there. Somebody else is, is declared. So... Is the people who made that observation is true. We must change that scenario. And we politicians, especially the governors, if they want this democracy to survive, they have to allow other parties to also win. But you know what is happening? We are like compulsive, you know, uh, uh, gamblers. You know, and, you know, a compulsive gambler does he just puts his money. He just want to take everything. He will just spend his money. You don't have to have all the local governments. You don't have to have all the councillors before you, as the governor, can implement your programs. You know, before you can, you, can, you can do whatever you want. Why do you want to have 100% you know, uh, councillors? Like, like what is happening even today playing out. So that's why somebody talked about the judges, the, the appeal course. 
I hope they will rise to the occasion and then save this democracy. They should please for, you know, stop declaring these funny judgments that they, they, they coming out of this appeal course you know, that we are, we are receiving. They can do it now. They can stop now because we have cases that are very, are very volatile cases. Like you have, you know, I, I mentioned Kano because everybody knows what Kano is in, in our elections in this country. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, in, in, in deliberately, you know, destroy what we have, please. You know, I remember what happened in, uh, in Odo State, Omomori Oho and uh, Ajasin, you know, that, that was the beginning of the end of that administration, the Shagadis administration, because they did something that is outside the normal, you know, deliberately. So we shouldn't, please, bring down this, this process. We should allow the process to go on. We should allow this democracy to survive. You know, so that we can, we, if you lose today, tomorrow you win. It's not the end of the, on the end, end, end of the, the, the story. You can, you can still win later, you know, if you allow the process to go on. But if you give people the impression that democracy doesn't count, vote do not count, it's dangerous. <coughs> well, I, from my own part, I still see these are the symptoms of something that has gone wrong. You see, our values, our orientation, if citizens are educated and they know what they are worth, you will not buy them with uh, a packet of uh, sugar or, or, or what, do, what, what do you call it? This, uh, some, 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 some would explain it to me and say the level of poverty means that uh, at that level, the people who are accepting such peanuts are just hungry and they're not of, thinking. Of, of course. I, I can give you a practical example of myself. When I, I, I started my career as a shoe shiner in front of the post office in my degree, at that time, there are days I will work for the whole day. I may not have enough money even to buy what they call a roasted potato. And you see, as a hungry boy, anything that comes my way, I would just accept the morality was no more there. Okay? But now, I'm educated. Okay? The fact that I was a shoe shiner, who later on saved the money and went to school, you cannot just buy my conscience. It's not possible. So also, if we invest in educating our citizens to know what they are worth, you can't buy them with a pack of uh, Maggi or whatever, because they are worth more than that. That's right. Secondly, our orientation in terms of also valuing them should not just be handouts. Should not just be handouts. Now, the way we feel that we can alleviate their problem is just to give them a chicken feed and say we have done it. You know, there's a saying that teach a child how to catch a fish, not just give him a fish every day. And what is happening in most communities is this idea of, you know, uh, let me be the one to determine where you stay, where you live, and what you eat. Then, next level of orientation, we must be able to account for whatever we own. If I come in and I have something which I never had in just one year, by just occupying an office, I'm able to show something worth more than my annual salary. Somebody somewhere should ask a question. How did you come about it? How did you come about it? But here we celebrate it. Okay. We celebrate it. And some of us have experienced it, okay? And uh, this is what I want to see in our citizens. Let them put value on themselves, and we, the leaders, also we should respect them. Let's not lead them with deceit. Let us not lead them with some kind of an, uh, fantasy. Lastly, we must be inclusive. The idea that I must have everybody from my party or from my own ethnic group before I could rule well. I don't think it helps. Nigeria is a diverse society. And I love diversity for the simple reason that you will hear an opinion which might save you from a situation than just having a, um, a monotonous, or sorry, uh, well, well, just one single land idea. This kind of hero worship, hardly do you get people would advise you. As I, I serve as a vice chancellor. Deliberately, I said I will not have two principal officers from my own, from the same place, <coughs> from where I come from. So when we come, we are all different. So we only talk university, nothing more. And it helped me in governance. 
and you must be fair and inclusive. Well, let's get back to uh, Ustaz and uh, take his closing comments as we wind down on this program. What are your, your, your final words on, on this program, Ustaz? I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very, may, may, may I humbly caution us on this issue of, of commenting on cases as I think God like this in Canada. Please, Honorable, uh, it, 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 it will not help our democracy if we should say this how it will be done and so on. You see, and one thing we forget in life, as a judge, whether or under the, uh, the Bible or Quran, the judge is not supposed to use his own personal knowledge or experience in giving judgment. It depends on what is proved. For example, many of the elections that were lost were lost because many loopholes were left open. So because a judge has no power to say, ah, because honorable say Carlos will be this or that. No, 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 no. In fact, if you, you may have, it, it, you know, court system like this. A, a, a murderer must have been caught with a gun or so. If the policeman or the state council does not know how to tender that gun, that gun is in the hand. The judge is in it. If it is not tender, the judge has no power, both in Islam and Christ Christianity, to, to, to say yes, but uh, uh, and I know as a fact that you did so. If he knows as a fact, then he, he should be a witness. Yeah, so that in most cases, we blame courts instead of blaming those who prosecuted the cases. And once a case is in court, please, we, we are not supposed to comment on it until it is decided. Then finally, this issue of inclusiveness, sir, I'm very grateful, I'm very grateful. You see, if we really want sincere election and sincere governance, I've been suggesting it, but nobody listens. Nobody listens. This issue of winner takes all is destroying our, uh, the country. It, it, it's even causing all this uh, uh, rigging, uh, uh, maiming people so that you can win. If, 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 if the condition is that amended to the extent that if you are elected the governor, the second runner up automatically becomes the deputy governor. That second runner up will not take you to court. So there will be few disputes. Or in case of the president, maybe if you are the president, then the, the, the second runner up, where, where you have uh, 8 million votes, the, the person with, uh, with, with 7 point something million votes becomes they they look me up in Ghana and say, ah, well, but uh, what is any concern? Okay, look, look, as a politician, I, 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 as, a, as a politician, you should be able to work even with the devil. Okay. It, it, it is your, your ideas. Execute the plan that will save your country. Okay. My, my face is ugly. Don't look at my face. If you are if, if discussing, don't. And then we agree on... All right. I'm, af to, I'm afraid our time is up. And, uh, we have to thank you very much at this point in time. Yunus Ustaz Usman, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. We thank you uh, for contributing to this program. Thank you very much. And uh, back here, Engineer Yabagi Yusuf Sani, Chairman, Interparty uh, uh, Council. Uh, we thank you. Thank, thank you for always honoring our invitation to come thank in here. Probably. Thank you so much. And uh, Professor Andrew Haruna, Vice President, Nigerian Academy of Letters, Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council, Bingham University. Of course, the former Vice Chancellor, Federal University, Gashua. We thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And that's our program today. We thank you for being part of it. Next week, we'll be back with NTU Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stober. Bye for now.